that's as real as it gets. That's as real as it gets. I think everybody, no matter what industry you're in, you are all in moments where you're just like, did that really just happen? <laughs> and it still happened after Solange wrote a song about it and everything. Um, it was important to me, um, the 90s, and but Black Hollywood be a backdrop to, it is a backdrop to our story, but really um, be a love letter and also a exploration or behind the curtain of what it was like, what it is like and what it was like to be in these places that a lot of us sometimes here want to be, um, be in. And, and so, God, there's so many things in that one scene I could talk about. Um, starting with Jared, you know, the, you know, it was so interesting sometimes, even my relationship with Kelsey Grammer that, you know, people, oh, Kelsey Grammer, well, well technically, no, he, the, the industry is set up a certain way that there's sort of, he's an executive producer, but didn't do anything on the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, I am grateful, though, that if that's what it took to help get my show, Girlfriends on the Air, and, and this goes, to, I'm gonna give all credit due to Salim McKeel because I've had to work through this. <laughs> I'm still working through it because it's on TV. But, it's, but, but sometimes you're like, oh, I'm doing all this work, I'm doing all this work, and they're doing nothing. They're doing nothing, they just get, put their name on it and you doing all the work and people. And that's something that I personally have had to deal with um, and I'm thankful that Salim was in my life to tell me, uh, you, you focusing on the wrong syllable. You know, you're just, <laughs> You need to see the blessing in this. You, when you hear class of Kelsey Grammer's name, you should be thankful because Mara, look what you've been able to do with this. This is just the beginning. I remember Celine was one of the first people who told me, Mara, girlfriends is just the beginning for you. What are you talking about? Girl, get, on, like, get past this so you can get on with the other things. Um, but that is true in the industry. Like even Norman, you know, we've seen Norman be a little tough on the writers, but seeing his, where he is in the food chain and the context of things and, um, and, and then also wanted to talk about women's voices being drowned in the, in the writer's room, even from our own brothers sometimes. I mean, sometimes just the, you know, black, I don't know that we're used to, I'm still working this one out, but you know, the, the are, are we just a little bit more liberal in allowing our brothers to be themselves or are we just too accepting of the misogyny? Like what it, I'm not sure where, you know, where it lies, but we had to deal with that too, you know. Um, not having, not being heard and then having to come on a Saturday to work extra to be heard. I mean, we just had what equal payday about for black women and how we're what 65, is it 63 cents on the dollar? How much? 63, Lord. Um, Lord. <laughs> but you know, and because of that, also have you know worked hard to help bring parity and with with responsibility with the with the responsibility and the platform, which is so great. Um, working with Oprah and own knowing that that has at least to be a part of it, now to be a part of the conversation about parity. How do we keep moving things forward from where they've been? And I also have to sort of acknowledge the idea that it's, I have some good men in my life too, mentors. My mentor is Ralph Farquhar, who introduced me to Martha's Vineyard, I remember, and I remember sitting in the writer's room and he was talking about this place he and Melba would go. I'd be like, oh, I wanna go there one day. And oh yeah. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, there are some great men in the business that have helped, and so it's important to honor that as well. Um, but I just wanted to sort of show what it was like. There was also a lot of fun and camaraderie in that time period. You know, it was it was so much fun. I mean, a lot of us, we had sitcoms, so typically on a show night, we'd be done around 10, 30, 11, and people would go to George's. I don't know if people saw that episode. You go to George's. There was a whole fun lifestyle that I wanted to explore. Um, Marvin is an amalgamation of all the shows. It's not one particular show we're doing. It's just, you know, having a little fun with that idea. Um, uh, but again, the workplace politics is a big part of the show and um, going behind the curtain of showing how we, how even how a, 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 how a, a episode happens. Like if you see an episode like that was whack, that was crazy. Sometimes I'm, there's a process into how it got whack and crazy and then how they also got good. Who's in that room is important. And that's, you just hit on, I was gonna say that's, even though it does sometimes come with a burden, there's still the responsibility. Yes. And you kind of still feel gifted to have it, yes. as much as it weighs you down. It's like, it's, it's a, you know, um, because I think, 
I love how you show here that it is just as important, even though you did get called in to work twice as hard, to be heard, that you're at least still in the room, and being in the room is important. And in the entertainment system, that's on every level. And somebody paved the way for you to even be in the room, so we still have to steal mm -hmm. that responsibility of keeping moving, moving it further. Like, it's so fun. I think Prentice is, I not is, I know he is, Prentice is gonna be here for the Insecure screening. And Prentice started as a writer's trainee at Girlfriends, and I love that, and like I said, Ralph and Sarah Finney Johnson and Vita Spears, for me, they allowed me to be where I am. Prentice Penny is doing Insecure. Karen Gist, who also came out of, uh, came through the Girlfriends lineage, is doing, I think she's show running Star. Stars. Kenya Barris, straight out of both Felicia Henderson's Soul Food and um, and um, uh, but mainly in my girlfriends in game room, Kenya learned a lot of uh, Ralph's teachings of mine, my teachings to him, and you see how it just continues to grow. And that's important that we talk about legacy. A lot of times, I think in this business, and it irks me when I see some of my colleagues who want to put it out there that they've kind of like they just showed up and did it on their own. No, you did not. <laughs> you know, and I think it's okay to. It's more important and powerful to talk about the legacy and the latter um, than to sell this myth that you're doing it out there on your own. And it's it's and 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 also it creates power, you know, to say, hey, listen, I come from this. To say I come from this lineage, could is important. It can also help. Oh, then you know what you're doing. You know, I always say, do you know how to make the sausage? Oh, you come from a, a whole family of sausage makers. Come on, and, and, and we, can, we can entrust this $20 million to you, you know? And that is, you know, so anyway, so I find those things are very important, and I'm very, part, uh, very proud to be a part of this, this storytelling family. That actually starts from Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall, is, um, uh, Ralph came out of his rooms. I've come out of Ralph's rooms, and all the people I mentioned came out of my rooms, and, and now, and they're still, and we still, and then we get to stay there, which is also important that Oprah even creates a place for us to be, to have our stories told. And I, I met Kathy Hughes today, like, you know, that, to have places for us, patrons of the art, for us to tell our, a place for our stories to land, so that the, the uh, storytelling um, craft can stay um, good and evolve. And as we um, gear up this uh, next clip, just take a few seconds, please, and make sure all your phones are on vibrate. We've been a few tonight, and really appreciate it. Uh, next clip, please.